when I left my company, social chain, when it was worth 500 million or whatever it was at the time, the tempting thing to do was to spend my life as a social media CEO. Yeah. And having studied what happens when people get too caught up in identifying with their last accomplishment, I made the decision that I was going to try and pursue every facet of Stephen Bartlett. In this edition of Interview, we're joined by the youngest ever dragon from the BBC series Dragon's Den, the founder of the social media marketing agency Social Chain, and the guy who has the number one podcast in Europe on Spotify. Stephen Bartlett, thank you for joining us. You have an extraordinary story from starting out in your bedroom to becoming one of the world's most successful entrepreneurs. Tell me about your story. First of all, thank you for having me here. Yeah, I mean, my story's pretty, pretty twisting and turning. I went to school in Devon in the UK in the countryside. I was born in Africa originally, um, didn't fit into the school system at all, ended up getting expelled despite showing a real and passion towards business, despite running businesses at 16 and 17 years old, that was successful. Went off to university again, it felt like school, I was, I was expecting it to feel like something else. So I dropped out, dropped out of university after just one lecture, and off I went to try and figure out how to start a business this, and to pursue this idea I had. And in that process, I, you know, my parents very much sort of disowned me because I, was, um, I wasn't following the conventional path that my brothers and sisters had, sisters had followed and going to university. And I went through some hard times in, in that journey, but I was, I was fortunate to be very early in the social media um, game at a time when people didn't value social media, which is hard to imagine now, but at a time when brands wouldn't have their own social media page, and we were very much um, surfing that wave as it came into shore. So that's really was the catalyst for my success in my company, Social Chain. By very definition, the word entrepreneur means someone who's prepared to take risks. Do you think the fact that you were prepared to do that from the off was contributing to your success now? Well, this is interesting. I don't think I'm a risk taker. I think we just have, for you to understand what risk is, you, you have to first understand what the objective is, right? And for me, the objective of my life is to be happy. So if the objective of my life is to be happy, then the risk is anything that compromises that. And sitting in a university course for four years, doing something that wasn't gonna get me to where I wanted to be, compromised that. Mm. So the risk, therefore, would have been staying that would have been risking the, the North Star of my life. Mm. So the risk would have been staying in university for four years, going into a dead-end job that I didn't like, and living someone else's life. That was the risk. In terms of content creation, how difficult is it to remain true to yourself whilst creating something that appeals mm. to everyone else? I actually tend to believe that the most compelling content I can create is the stuff that's actually most authentic to myself. However, the perceived cost of doing being authentic is high. So the perceived cost of telling you all of the skeletons in my closet, all of the negativity, all of the hard times, the perceived cost of telling you that would probably make me look vulnerable mm -hmm. and look weak, right? So the, the, the thing you'd probably expect to hear from an entrepreneur is, oh, I'm so, I'm such a, I'm so brave and, you know, I planned it all out and all of that stuff. But in fact, that's actually not compelling because you've heard that a million times before. Authenticity is actually quite rare. So if I say I was like ridiculously lonely, my business partner became an alcoholic and was suicidal, uh, my mum stopped talking to me and um, I had all of these huge, huge challenges that I overcame. And in fact, I, I'm not a risk taker. Um, it, it's, it feels fresh mm. and because it's truth. And like, in fact, the thing that's in highest demand is truth. You've been very honest there about your, your past and your story. Were you able to repair those relationships as you found success and happiness within yourself and your career? With my family in particular, yes, because what you come to learn about your family is you actually both want the same thing. You just have a disagreement about the pathway to getting it. So my mother wanted me to be happy and safe and successful. She thought the pathway to getting there was um, university, and I thought it was pursuing myself and my dreams. So upon getting there, we can both be happy, and she can. I'm not going to like. I'm not going to make her regret it. She loved me. That's why she stood in my way. And so, um, yeah, it's all good. It's all good. What are the benefits of social media and influencer marketing? Um, I think I think when we when we try and figure out what like there's that old adage, right? People buy from people, yeah. and um, one of the real principles of psychology as it relates to influencing people to do anything is what we call social proofing, which is if someone else is doing it, you, uh, and especially if they're an authority figure, right, then there's a high chance of you performing that behavior. One example is if you're walking down the street and there's 20 people looking up at a building, you're gonna look up at the building. 
the way you decide whether to go and watch a movie or Netflix or whatever is based on reputation. We use the opinion of the tribe to help us survive because we don't always have the time to make those decisions for ourselves. And influencer marketing is very much calling on the same principles within our human wiring, which is if someone has a million followers for, for, for marketing, for being someone that knows marketing, the, the studies show that you're way more likely to believe them because it comes with a million people basically voting that the things they say are correct. Mm -hmm. um, if they're an authority figure on the matter, so if it's Lionel Messi, mm -hmm. he can sell you football boots. If it's a doctor, pills, health and anything health related. So authority and social proofing are two pillars of influencing people and influence marketing is both. It's social proofing, the crowd saying yes, and it's um, authority because that person has a reputation um, for being the best at football or being a doctor or being, knowing how to do marketing. That's like the fundamental psychological principles that make influence marketing um, work. The number one podcast in Europe, which is fantastic mm. on Spotify. You know, what have you learned from that process? When I have certain guests on, people criticize me. They say, oh, why are you platforming that person? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and these are people that the mainstream is allowed to interview. Sky, BBC can all interview a Matt Hancock. But if I do it, why are you platforming? At the, end, look, at the end of the day, as I've said about expression and the importance of like, the importance of being able to live who you are in your life for your happiness and your success, I'm gonna do what I wanna do, right? That is, that is my right. And your right as a listener is to not listen. You can write it in the comments section below. You can say that it's awful, you don't like it, whatever. But my right is to live on my terms and there's no social pressure that's gonna stop me living on my terms. I've seen the consequence of it. I think the world actually needs more people who are open-minded and that are nuanced and that aren't on the left or the right. Um, and that's what I want to do with my life. It's the thing that gives me the most joy. The UAE is hoping to be home to 20 unicorns by the year 2031. How do we drive growth in the entrepreneurial ecosystem? If we think about the, the businesses that are going to be the next unicorns and the ones that are becoming unicorns fastest right now, they're pretty much all in the Web3 industry. Like that's the space that if I was the UAE and I was thinking, okay, I want to capture 20 unicorns by in the next 10 years, whatever, whatever it is, I would be trying to make this the home of Web3 businesses. I'd be trying to create an, in the infrastructure, the talent pools, the funding, um, and really a, an, an attitude and a culture that is friendly for Web3 startups. I mean, blockchain startups, crypto startups. And I don't know of an industry where companies are going from zero to unicorn as fast as Web3. So I'd basically double down on that. If you could go back, is there anything you would do differently? If I could go back with knowing what I know now, I'd probably do everything differently. <laughs> People don't usually say that either. Oh, no, no regrets. Oh, <laughs> that's a load of BS. Um, I'd do everything differently. If, if I knew the answers to all the experiments I carried out for the last 10 years, I would, I would do the right things faster, mm -hmm. and I would not do the wrong things. So every decision I've made every single day, I'd do, do completely differently. I think an overall thing, as I look back on my life is, you know, people say that I got to where I am at a young age. I think I could have got there faster. And I think I could have got there faster if I had a higher degree of conviction and the, the infrastructure around me when I was 16 had, had noticed, well, this kid has started loads of businesses and he's making all of this money and he's 16. Why are we putting him in a health and social care class and having him push a plastic baby around the school? We should probably be doubling down and teaching him finance, uh, business, entrepreneurship. We should have doubled down on the thing that he was passionate about. His attendance was 20% in that lesson. He's, 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 his attendance in business is 100%, mm. but the system isn't designed to do that. And systems heavily di dictate outcomes. What advice would you give to any budding entrepreneur who wants to follow in your footsteps? So the most important thing I came to learn about business is that your, your, your outcomes are actually more correlated to how good you are at hiring than you'll, you'll ever know. And I didn't learn this until my third year in business, but in fact, if you look at the definition of the word company in a dictionary, the actual definition is a group of people. And I didn't realize that. As a young entrepreneur, you kind of think it's about you or your talent or what you know. And then I, I remember that the moment in my business where we hired really exceptional people mm -hmm. and it changed everything. It cha I, was, I had no stress. They, they knew things I didn't know that I didn't know. All the unknown unknowns were solved and it was pivotal. And I just wish I'd, someone had said to me earlier, in fact, you are a recruitment company. Stephen Bartlett, fantastic to talk to you today. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Me. Thank you.